So if you've been watching a lot of my videos, you probably realize by now that I love Japan. Uh, I've watched my you know, favorite movies of all time. You'll see a lot of Asian movies on there, you know, Chinese and Japanese, but uh, watch everything as a whole, you'll realize that I love getting into Japanese media specifically more than anything else in the world. Uh, sort of my favorite cultural time capsule would be 80s and 90s Japan. Like to me, that is the perfect time frame that I would love to live in forever. Like, for me, the perfect world would be having, you know, be in my 20s in the 80s Japan and then, you know, 30s and 90s Japan or maybe even like teens and then 20s. That's just, that's my favorite time. I love everything about Japan in that time period. I do um, enjoy Japanese history going as far back as mythology and learning all about even, even the politics and the economics of today. But that, for some reason, that little window of about two decades is the area where I love the TV shows, I love the music, I love the you know the anime and and the live action content. I love just everything about the culture during that time period. I love the video games in that time period. I really, as far as game collecting, I mean, you could take a system like the PlayStation Two and just collect only for that library and be good for the rest of your life. Especially if you know Japanese, I mean, you have access to thousands upon thousands of games plus entire PS1 library, so you could do that. But for me, a lot of consoles, I very much narrow down the number of games I want from those libraries because I really enjoy and want to get very heavily into a lot of sort of niche uh, Japanese consoles, things that weren't even very successful in Japan, and or obviously Japan only, just because there's certain, I don't know, there's like a fascination for me with sort of underdog um, content from Japan from 80s and 90s. I really love that and I love the history of Japan, I love everything, just everything about that era. And one of the main things, of course, if you really want to get into that, you need to learn Japanese. You can't really enjoy very many TV shows and movies or music or games or anything like that without learning the language, and definitely it's going to be easier when I finally am able to go back to the country to get around and get more involved with people. So it's something I've really been working on um, goes in sort of spurts about how heavily I get into learning Japanese, but over the years I've really gained a lot of knowledge, and today I wanted to pass a little bit of that on and tell you about how I've sort of taught myself Japanese. I've only taken a little bit of, you know, college, uh, a few credits for that. It's not really been something that I studied heavily in college. It's something that has definitely helped me taking courses in Japanese, but I've mostly done it on my own, and I want to kind of tell you how I've done that. Uh, the very first thing I got many, many years ago, I actually have two copies of this, um, was Japanese in 10 minutes a day, which was one of those incredibly basic, uh, I think like Barnes & Noble finds that kind of just gives you a grasp on the basics of the language, especially if you're going to be a tourist. And it was kind of an interesting place to start because it was one of the hardest things to do. When you're thinking about learning a language, especially on your own, figuring out what areas to target and how to get started can be the hardest part. So this wasn't a great learning tool, but it was a great way of me figuring out where I actually do want to start in my studying of the language. And it really helped me build a vocabulary very quickly, but the problem about it is um, the entire thing is in Romanji, so the entire thing is in um, like English lettering. So you're learning the vocabulary but you're not actually learning to read the Japanese text. So by starting here and continuing in my learning from here, this is a base, I actually ran into a problem where my uh, listening comprehension and my ability to speak Japanese was several levels ahead of my ability to read and write Japanese. It was just very, very disproportionate and still is a little bit um, because I went from not only doing this to build a vocabulary and teach myself in the beginning, but using a lot of watching uh, live-action TV shows, either online or you know DVDs or video CDs, whatever, um, watching its uh, anime, not actually more live-action than anime, surprisingly, in Japanese, and building up sort of my listen comprehension as I was learning more vocabulary and not really focusing on the writing. Uh, so what I moved on to from there to help me out were a few, again, mostly audio things here. This is something you can actually find that I think um, Japanese Deluxe is the title of, this is version 3.0, and it's 
pretty, I think, like early 2000s, but you can still find it online. I think there's like one edition after this. I think they stopped after a while. But it's just a complete audio set for learning Japanese. It goes through disc one as alphabet and sounds, then greetings and introductions, uh, numbers and time, more numbers and counting, and family. And again, fairly basic stuff, but there's actually a lot of content considering how many CDs. And it's a good thing to just kind of pop in the car and listen to, but again, just listening comprehension. Um, another thing I got was uh, Human Japanese. This is version 2.0. Um, this is another one that, if you're a beginner, is a great tool and very, very cheap to find. You know, you just go on Amazon and find this for maybe 20 bucks. is pretty cheap. And it's nice because it does have a little bit of listening comprehension, but it mixes it with a lot of um, games on your computer. It's a, a PC software. And a lot of things like memory, uh, playing the game like memory with uh, hiragana and then katakana, and then you do it with, I think, the first 50 kanji, I think. But there's a lot of like animations, a lot of things with um, seeing a word written out in hiragana and being able to click on it and hear it being said authentically in Japanese and dragging it and dropping it to like a picture of like you know, a dog or something or a cat. Uh, just very basic kind of childlike things that you need to do to start to learn a language. The number one thing that I suggest though, if you're going to get into a little more of a balanced reading and writing along with your listening, is um, Genki. This is a series of textbooks that, uh, this is just volume one here, that most uh, college level Japanese courses actually will use this series of textbooks. So this is something you can get your hands on pretty cheaply online that is actually used in classrooms. And uh, many courses and ones I took, the, um, the first two levels pretty much cover most of the book, like the chapters one through four or five would be covered in like Japanese 101 and then you move on to Japanese 102 and covers the next part. So it's really good and you'll find corresponding workbooks to go with it and audio CDs. So this is, you know, again I'll show you this one here. If you're interested all in learning Japanese, this is the number one thing I suggest you get is get this, get a workbook, and focus on other things to improve your uh, listening comprehension and your speaking ability along with that. And to help with the sort of harder aspects because while this is the perfect beginner's book. It doesn't get too heavily into kanji, the more complicated, um, you know, third alphabet of Japanese. It has a little bit in the back and has basics like dates and uh, things with like money. And, but to get into a little bit more practice, I purchased two volumes here of the first 100 Japanese kanji and the second 100 Japanese uh, kanji. So it has uh, two full sets here, just sort of extra practice. I mean, these are just, you can get anything really. This is all about just sort of finding ways to get extra practice for yourself. Um, other things related to that, just looking up YouTube videos, uh, finding different ways of writing and learning that way. Uh, another thing I suggest is getting just sort of a giant book on kanji, especially after you get past the 101, 102 sort of beginner's level, because that's going to be the biggest problem I feel like for almost everybody is even after you get a f decent mastery of hiragana and katakana getting into kanji is very difficult um, especially for me I said with how I started was sort of avoiding the reading and writing part this has been a huge problem for me just getting through that but this is sort of a great just kind of guide and that's sort of the very sort of I guess you could say more more studious ways of learning but other things that I found to really get you engaged are not to think of it as just studying. Think of it as fun. Think about, like, keep in mind the reasons why you want to learn it. Not just because you want to learn another language, but why do you want to learn that other language? And really give yourself an opportunity to enjoy a lot of entertainment and media in that form that you can understand. Listening again to a lot of music, watching a lot of TV shows with subtitles and eventually as you learn more and more try watching it without it and just kind of really focus on listening and trying to figure out what is happening. And if you're enjoying your enjoying entertainment, if you watch you know, a Japanese TV show and you're really really getting into it, you're going to be able to figure out a lot of what's going on just from what you're seeing visually and that can really help you pick up on words and you start listening more and more and picking up on individual words that you know 
and based on the context of what is happening as those words that you understand are being said, you can perhaps kind of piece together other words that are being said that you might not know. So it's a really good way of doing that and keeping things fresh and keeping it entertaining because if you just sort of put your you know, nose to the grindstone and study, you're going to get frustrated, you're going to get bored. So focus on fun things, entertaining things. Um, for me, you know, I have some manga in Japanese, stuff that I'm very familiar with. So if you're very familiar with the content, it's much easier to sort of figure out what's being said, sort of lower uh, reading level things. I have some uh, children's books here that I used and um, that it was <laughs> a very, very proud moment when I was able to read the majority of this without uh, looking anything up. And, you know, to this, to this day, it's still like, oh man, I can't believe this. And, you know, it's maybe second or third grade le reading level at the very, very most, maybe even like first grade. But still, just being able to get that far at such a milestone and you have like authentic material to work with. So you're sort of learning the language a little bit closer to the way a native speaker would learn by surrounding yourself in media in that language and sort of working on reading and writing from a child's level up. And another thing a lot of people don't think about is using uh, video games. Not only do systems like the DS have things like just-in-time translations and they have like my Japanese coach, my Chinese coach, my French coach, lots of sort of all-inclusive uh, learning tools. I mean, in all honesty, the my Japanese coach is fairly close to Rosetta Stone. I mean, it's really not that far removed considering the price difference. Or even something like this is great for just like sort of basic translations. But using things that really engage you playing uh, video games in the language you're learning, I mean, this as an RPG is definitely above my reading level, but there are bits and pieces that I've understood and even just playing through this once has helped me learn a lot more because even though in the way you're watching you know, television shows or listening to music, you're getting engaged to a certain extent, but by playing a game where you actually have to physically engage yourself in what is going on and maneuver your way through text and options and menus within that language, it really makes you get very active and aggressive with your learning of the language. That's one thing that I really suggest. Um, check out uh, any systems that you have. I mean, most handhelds are region free, not all, but majority handhelds are region free. You can find games, sometimes even cheaper, online. A uh, good thing to do is get a game that you're very familiar with, a favorite, in English and in Japanese, and play it through in Japanese and sort of like use that as a way of learning. Uh, those are just some ways that I learn Japanese. Uh, this will be a topic I'll touch on every once in a while on this channel, uh, maybe showing you uh, different ways that I've figured out, different games that I've picked up or TV shows that I've watched that have helped me along my way in learning Japanese. And I hope you guys are a little more interested after watching this and maybe learning another language, not necessarily Japanese, but whatever you're interested in. And kind of gives you a little bit more of an idea, I hope, of how you can go about learning a language and not make it such a dry topic, such a like homework task. Make it something that's fun and integrate it into your daily life. Like I said, watch a show in the language that you want to learn instead of watching an English show at night. And just after a while, very slowly but surely, the same way that, you know, you know my video about uh, video game collecting, I said eventually you build up a collection, you know, piece by piece, same way you learn language, just piece by piece, and eventually, before you know it, you're doing pretty well. So hopefully you're well on your way to learning another language, and I'll see you next episode.